welcome everybody to um, the second uh, of our uh, presentations and Q&A sessions on our open event, uh, open days uh, event today. Um, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of, of who's who's on our um, event today um, and what we're going to be doing. So um, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name's uh, Professor Jonathan Nappett. I'm one of the academics in civil engineering. Um, in a short while, I'm going to be giving a, a little presentation, an overview of of, of engineering uh, at the University of Dundee, civil engineering in particular, um, uh, and and some of the and a little sort of virtual tour um, uh, around around some of our some of our um, buildings here. Um, and after that, we'll we'll move on to a Q and A session, um, which will be chaired by our admissions tutor, Professor Michael Brown, who is on the call, um, and we have also three of our current students participating as well. Uh, we have uh, Claire Vallis, uh, Thomas Graham and Diva Gunasingham. Um, Diva is also our producer for today, so he's he's pulling, pressing all the buttons in, in the right places. Um, I'll just say before before I start, if you have any uh, questions, um, you can post them using the Q&A uh, functionality uh, in Teams. It should be a, a pair of speech bubbles with a question mark in it. Um, you'll probably see that we have some posted questions already from the from the first se um, um, session, so there might be some useful links there for you. Um, you can post questions there during the presentation uh, because uh, uh, Professor Brown will be uh, observing the, the chat and keeping an eye on it. Um, if you have a, 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 a particularly personal question uh, that relates to your, your circumstances, he, he may well respond to you directly um, on the chat. Um, if it's a more general question, we may well hold it to the end for our, for our Q&A session. OK, so uh, without further ado, I will uh, move on to our presentation today and hopefully I can get a laser pointer up so I can point at things. There we go. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do today is introduce um, uh, engineering at Dundee uh, with a focus on the programmes we run in civil and structural engineering. So science and engineering uh, as a whole um, is ranked very highly in Scotland. Um, for example, our research is ranked number one in Scotland and third in the UK. Uh, in the most recent research excellence framework uh, exercise uh, and this our research is, is something that underpins all of our fully accredited courses. We have um, a, a big focus on research led and research informed teaching. Uh, across the school, the school itself um, covers a, a range of academic disciplines um, including anthro anatomy and forensic anthropology, uh, computing and computer science, um, various types of engineering um, and mathematics and physics. So in terms of engineering, we do we have um, programs in biomedical engineering in, in the broad area of civil engineering and in mechanical engineering as well. In terms of those specific engineering um, uh, areas, um, our biomed biomedical engineering is about designing the healthcare technologies of the future. And the picture here shows keyhole surgery, which is something that was uh, pioneered at Dundee. Um, as civil engineers, which is what we're going to focus on today, um, we focus on providing a resilient and sustainable future built environment. So we're we're responsible for maintaining um, the infrastructure around us, our roads, our railways, our buildings, um, and building new things um, when we need them. Um, doing things like provision of clean water, sanitation, various types of things, all the things that support our infrastructure and society around us. And we want to be able to do that um, to make things that are resilient to future changes like climate change and extreme weather, natural hazards, um, and make them sustainable, um, uh, friendly to the environment um, and not particularly destructive. And then our colleagues in mechanical engineering um, work on um, developing solutions for energy transport and manufacturing needs. Um, and there are, there, are, there are some synergies and crossovers in energy and transport between mechanical and engineering and civil engineering. So for example, our mechanical engineering colleagues may be interested in the operation and performance of a wind turbine and in civil engineering we may be interested in um, how you actually install that turbine in the field uh, and maintain it. We have excellent facilities I'm not going to spend too long on this uh, slide uh, because I'm going to introduce some of the specific ones in civil engineering later but those include lab facilities, um, general lab facilities for teaching, um, research facilities such as this um, I believe this is a, an, an MRI machine here um, and uh, our geotechnical centrifuge um, and also um, recently um, developed um, uh, relaxation facilities as well. 
Um, engineering at Dundee, um, just in terms of our philosophy, this is a kind of general slide that, 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 that covers all of the types of engineering we do. Uh, we're very uh, keen on active learning, so students will be hands on. Here are some mechanical engineers doing a, a robot uh, challenge. Um, in civil engineering, we would be uh, building model structures and, and testing them to destruction. Um, we have a very, we are very lucky to have very advanced laboratory facilities for our research that get that because they are there, students can use them. So you get to access things you won't be able to access anywhere else. Um, the programs are quite flexible. We have the opportunity to switch between engineering programs, um, particularly at the end of level one. It's quite flexible uh, to move move from one to the other. And in terms of the student voice, we are we work together. Um, with students, you know, listen to what you say so we can develop the courses and make sure um, that they they provide both what you need as a professional and um, to, to meet what your um, your requirements and, and um, your desires are from from your course. Now, in although we do three main areas of civil, uh, three main areas of engineering, uh, we that we have six undergraduate programs in those areas. Um, and the three we're going, they're listed here, and the three we're going to focus on today uh, are the ones associated with civil engineering. So we've got the, a civil and structural engineering BEng degree, so that's a Bachelor of Engineers degree, a civil and structural engineering uh, uh, Master of Engineering degree, and a new course, Structural Engineering with Architecture, um, which is also a Master of Engineering degree. So that the BEng is a is a conventionally a four year degree, but can be done in three. Um, and the MEng degrees here are five year degrees, but can be done in four. Um, the three and the four year options here are to make them similar to to um, courses in the rest of the UK. So one of the most important things about um, an engineer doing an engineering course at university is um, whether it is accredited by the engineering institutions to allow you to progress to become a, a professionally qualified engineer um, once you have finished your 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 education and, and started uh, in the world of work. Um, so the general route is that you'll come and study a course. Um, if you study, I will start with the MEng degree here. If you study an MEng uh, degree in the UK that's accredited, so say our civil and structural engineering course, that provides you all the learning you need to be able to become a chartered engineer. So when you graduate from, from us, you can go into your first job where you'll you'll learn you'll get lots of professional development working on real projects that will enable you to submit your chartered professional review uh, and become a chartered engineer. Um, now our, uh, our degrees are all accredited with the Engineering Council for the UK, um, which means uh, you can become a chartered engineer with the Institution of Civil Engineers, the Institution of Structural Engineers, Chartered Institute of Highways and Transportation, the Institute of Highway Engineers, and there's a new one that's just been added, which is the Permanent Ways Institute. The, these are just the, the civil engineering ones. Um, obviously, the other branches of engineering have their own institutions um, for accreditation. Now, if you do a Bachelor of Engineering degree, uh, because that's one year shorter, that doesn't provide all the education you need to become a fully chartered engineer, but does cover all the educational requirements so that with your first job, you can become an incorporated engineer. An ING. Um, that doesn't mean to say that you can't become a chartered engineer if you've done a Bachelor of Engineering degree. It just means that you need to come back and do a, a year of further learning, a master's level qualification such as an MSc um, to bring it up to the same standard as, as an MEng degree. OK, so with a BEng plus an MSc, you can then go on and become a fully chartered engineer. So our degrees are fully accredited as meeting those requirements to allow you to get to this point. The one exception to that currently is our new MN Structural Engineering with Architecture. This is only uh, launching this coming September, so our first intake on this course will start in um, a few weeks' time. Um, and that we will be, look, we are applying to have that accredited in our next accreditation visit for, for all of our courses, which is in March 2022. So we'll certainly um, have the outcome of that by the time um, anybody on this call today who is applying um, would, would um, uh, would be uh, would, would be starting the course uh, in September next year. I'll just say a few extra words about that extra new, the, the, the new course, um, uh, just because it is new and you might not have heard so much about it. Um, as I say, it's new course starting this coming September. It is essentially 75% structural engineering, drawing content from our civil and structural engineering programme, 
um, and 25% architecture. And the architecture is taught by our colleagues um, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the School of Architecture at the University of Dundee. Now, one key thing that differentiates our programme from a lot of the competitors in the UK, particularly our competitors in Scotland, are that we have um, designed our course to have architecture content in every year of the course. Okay, generally it's a bit easier when you're creating combined programs like this to, to shoehorn a lot of the, um, uh, the additional material into the first and second years um, where there's less um, detailed content from, from say the, the structural engineering side that, that you, have to, you have to avoid to, to make the space. But we very carefully designed our course to make sure that you can access even quite advanced architecture content in the later years of the programme alongside the advanced structural engineering content. A lot of the architecture content will be delivered in, is delivered in a different way rather than the very heavily lab based approach that we use um, for uh, the engineering aspects of the programme. The architecture is delivered by studio teaching and, and we actually use some of these studio based methods in the later years um, also on our, on our other programmes uh, for doing design based work. The students tend to work together um, or they will work together once our first cohort goes on um, in the, the level five multidisciplinary project and um, which is a large design based project which I'll show some examples of later on. And there's flexible transfer possible between the MEng programmes, uh, the two different programmes at the end of level one which I'll show uh, just on the next slide. So in terms of uh, ability to transfer, here are our two MEng degrees, each have five years. Uh, so as I said, there's, if you start on either of these MEng programmes at the end of level one, you can transfer um, uh, from either of these programmes to the other one if you, if you change your mind about what you want to study. Um, and it's also possible to enter a, a level two direct entry uh, with the appropriate qualifications to these courses. OK, that, that's what allows us to be able to swap um, between courses at the end of level one. It's also worth saying that for the, the, the civil and structural engineering course, which has a bachelor's and a master's um, option, there is the ability to transfer uh, between the two programmes effectively at any point over the first three years. Uh, but because the courses are quite similar over those first th uh, three years, um, really we only need to make that final decision about which route you're going to follow um, uh, in level three. OK, but, but it is as long as you're meeting the, the if you start on the B eng and you're meeting the performance level um, to be on the MEng, then you will be able to transfer. Likewise, if you're on the MEng and you need to leave, graduate a year early for some reason, you can uh, leave. A, you can swap the other way uh, and graduate a year earlier with a Bachelor of Engineering degree. I've just put this here to remind you that if you do a Bachelor of Engineering degree, one of the most common things people do is then to have to add an MSc on if they want to become a Chartered Engineer. So for a bit more detail, um, in level one, this is where we really cover engineering fundamentals. Um, this has often been thought of as a bit of a foundation year in, in Scottish universities, which typically have um, uh, degrees which are a year longer than perhaps in, in the rest of the UK. Um, but, but we find that it's very popular for students to enter um, uh, level one um, to, to get all that content um, now, it, almost irrespective of, of where the students come from and what qualifications they have. Um, so you can see we do a lot of core things. Uh, this is uh, common with the other engineering disciplines as well. So with mechanical and biomedical engineers, we study core subjects like mathematics, mechanics, uh, basic engineering materials, um, and uh, then we do some additional civil engineering content specific stuff, um, uh, project work that's specific to civil engineering, structural behavior, um, and communication and professional practice. Now, in terms of the difference between the civil and structural route and the structural engineering with architecture route, uh, we replace this multidisciplinary engineering project where all the engineering students work together um, with architecture content, which is a studio module studied with students on the architecture course. You can see some of the, this is a very hands on year. We try to do a lot of model building in the in the lab. So you can see the students here building a, a tower here out of balsa wood uh, to test their, their understanding of, of structural principles. Um, level two is where we really cover our core subjects because there is it's possible to enter directly at level two and this is where we start uh, teaching all of the fundamental subjects you might be familiar with that civil engineers do. So that includes fluid mechanics, um, geomechanics, so engineering of the ground, uh, structures, surveying as well, 
Um, we introduced civil engineering software here as well. So you have that as that, that digital framework as a basis for taking through the rest of the course. Um, again, there is a difference here between um, the architecture course where you do some architecture modules in place of some of the um, uh, civil and structural engineering co uh, content. Um, and one of the things I wanted to uh, just say a little word about the picture here. Um, at least until the pandemic hit, we were able for the for the surveying part of this course. We still take the students away on a residential field trip. So you spend one 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 week uh, surveying around campus to get the practice of everything, and then we go out to the. This is the, a picture from the Isle of Cumbrae, um, where you get to practice your surveying techniques um, in beautiful scenery and challenging conditions um, like this. Um, we hope to be able to get back to that uh, once uh, um, the restrictions ease up a bit. Um, after, uh, after COVID. Level three is where we start going from theory to practice. So having laid the, fun, the, the core subject theory, we can start putting that into practice. So these modules in this year are very, have a very heavy lab content typically uh, because, uh, and using more specialist equipment that we have in the labs to test sp uh, specific concepts. So we still do a bit of mathematics, but then civil engineering specific materials, some structural analysis, um, steel and concrete structures, things that are very important for civil engineers to be aware of. Digital structural analysis and design, so continuing that thread of digital use of, of tools. Um, soil mechanics, environmental fluid mechanics. And again, some architecture content uh, for those wanting to pursue that route. Level four is uh, where we think of we're trying to make sure the students are ready for industry uh, because this is the last year of the Bachelor of Engineering program. Um, so that's we need to make sure all the all the you know fundamental design um, skills that you need um, you have by this stage of the course. Um, so what you'll see is rather than um, um, sort of structural analysis or geotechnical analysis, we're now moving on to design, which is a, a slightly different um, way of thinking about problems. Uh, so we do geotechnical design, structural design, um, readying you for industry. We do our construction management at this year as well. Um, this is also because this is the last shared year. This is also the year that all students do their individual research project. Now you might hear this referred to also as an honours project or a dissertation. Um, this is just the chance for each individual student to pick a project and work with it with an individual member of academic staff, essentially pushing forward the boundaries of civil engineering in, a, in the specific area they've chosen. So working on, on perhaps an element of ongoing research. Um, there's also the opportunity to do to take some to make some choices of elective content um, here so you can make a bit of a choice about whether you want to as you add some specialty specialism in um, sort of use of computational modeling or fluid mechanics or concrete technology, whatever it might be. Um, and in the structural engineering route, there is um, again architectural content replacing some of the electives. Essentially, if you're doing that route, the elective content is your architecture content. Level five, this is the year that is only um, uh, used for the MEng courses, so apologies that that BN shouldn't be there. Um, this is where we, the, the, the idea of an MEng program is really to prepare the engineering leaders for the future. Um, so what you'll see is that we, we do some important overarching concepts here, sustainable construction, project and enterprise management. So thinking about um, leading projects and also leading businesses as well. Um, and one of the key parts of this year is the multidisciplinary project. OK, this is a, a bigger unit because it is worth more than the other individual taught modules in this part. And what students will do here is be given a real world project with real life data and they have to do the whole lot, the whole construction, the, the structural design, the architectural design, um, the uh, the uh, groundworks, the transportation, uh, environmental engineering, everything. Um, to give you an example of the kind of work produced by the students, this this is uh, an example of a, a rendering of the student structure um, that was produced in the, in the the year just gone. This is what we call the Fairley Building. It's um, they're essentially doing a feasibility study for the university building a new building um, for its forensic science um, activities. And the students started with a complete fresh sheet of paper. Did all the architectural design, the structural design, make sure it will stand up, all the geotechnics, the foundations, um, everything about this, um, this project. And you can see that they have really advanced skills um, in computer modeling and rendering as well that they can take to industry. 
There's also the possibility to spend a third of this level five uh, um, selecting electives and they can be selected from our master uh, of engineering programs. There's quite a wide uh, range of, or, or there there's, will be quite a wide, wide range of courses to select from to tune your course, whether you want it to be a specialty in geotechnical engineering or structural engineering or bridge engineering and whatever you might like to do. Um, now to say a bit more about, you know, that those are quite generic things, I suppose. Um, they give you a flavour for what the Dundee course is, but perhaps not who Dundee are and what we do. Um, so I have a few slides where, I, where I'll try and indicate that. And um, perhaps one of the biggest things is that uh, Dundee as a university is, is really one of the world leaders on climate ad action Ac across a wide range of subjects. Um, we are ranked first in the UK and fifth in the world for, for climate action in the Times Higher Education University impact rankings from this year. Now in civil engineering, most a, a large proportion of our work revolves around um, adapting our infrastructure um, or creating new building techniques that can lead us to a low carbon, sustainable, um, resilient future. And I've shown some examples here uh, by these pictures to give you an idea. So uh, on the left hand side here, we have uh, looking protecting our infrastructure from extreme weather. We had a, um, a, a, a landslip that derailed a, a high speed train um, just last year, um, about 10 miles north of where I'm presenting from at the moment. So this is a really big problem for the UK and for Scotland in particular. And here we're looking at using a ve planting vegetation here to stabilise the slopes against extreme weather, uh, while also you know, improving things like biodiversity and obviously sustainability. Or you might be interested in structures and you might be working on developing low carbon materials. You know, we can't necessarily do without concrete for everything um, at the moment. And so you might be working on replacing the cement with other materials to make it more a lower carbon and more sustainable. Um, so reutilizing waste materials or perhaps working on structural design principles to, to optimize the design of the structure to make it more efficient. Or you might be interested in um, renewable energy. So obviously providing offshore renewable energy is going to be a key component of us meeting our um, uh, 2050 climate change targets. Um, and a lot at the moment, a lot of the there are a lot of challenging sites where we could develop renewable energy. And we will need to develop renewable energy that we can't because we don't have the technology. So in civil engineering, we are developing new mooring and anchoring solutions and new design solutions for devices themselves to be able to unlock those deep water sites um, and provide, you know, really allow us it, facilitate us being able to deliver um, the, the green energy we require. Now, just a um, general overview of study in Dundee. So this is a this is a university level level slide. Uh, the university as a whole is top 20 in the UK in the Guardian University Guide. Um, overall satisfaction of 78.3% across all all um, subjects in the university. I'm using this as a benchmark for civil engineering on the next slide. Um, ranked 28th in the United Kingdom in the Complete University Guide and first in Scotland for graduate prospects. Now, why are these uh, numbers important is because if we look at civil engineering specifically, we are ranked eighth in the UK and I've, I've picked the third of the university uh, uh, league tables just to make just, just 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 to complete the set from the previous slide. So in the Times Good University Guide we're ranked eighth in the UK. We had 91% overall satisfaction in the National Student Survey and their undergraduate programmes. Um, 97% of our students um, were in work or full time study, so they perhaps chosen to stay on to do an MSc programme after graduation from the most recent graduate outcome survey. Um, and 100% of our UK domiciled students uh, were in work or full time study after graduation. Now, there's a, a lot of those statistics I've just given you are essentially us or independent bodies uh, telling you how good we are. But if you want a student perspective, um, you can go online uh, to our blog, page, the university blog pages and two of our, actually they're now just recently finished students, Ethan and Julia here, um, have a, a series of student blogs online uh, that you can read that might give you an idea, for example, of um, uh, what the work they do, so multidisciplinary design in level five, or they might be more general, their opinion pieces on how civil engineers can save the world, 
um, or for example, hints and tips to thrive in online assessment centers. So if you, you might find that a useful source of information and a good to give you a better feel of, of engineering at Dundee. Scholarships and funding, obviously money is an important uh, um, thing to think about. Um, and what I recommend you do is to go on onto the university's pages again. I think there's also, there will also be a booth for funding um, back in the exhibition hall. Uh, there is an online database with a search tool available on the university website where you can select your country of origin and your fee status, whether you want to study full time or part time, and it will tell you, it will give you an overview of what scholarships um, are available to you. Some of them are really quite uh, substantial in value, uh, so I definitely recommend you go there and you can get personalised guidance um, on what is available for you. So just to finish with a quick brief uh, photo slideshow uh, because you can't actually come up and see the campus at the moment just to give you a bit more of a feel for Dundee um, where the university is where engineering is uh, and, and what the kind of facilities we have so I start off with this aerial overhead shot uh, this is basically the university campus comes uh, around here um, so it's right in the center of the the city um, the engineering buildings are here. I've ringed them in a yellow building. So there's a Fulton building here and the civil engineering laboratories on the back here. Uh, it's very easy to get around. Dundee as a city is very compact and the campus is very compact as well. Um, it's a matter of about 30 seconds to walk to the library and learning centre. Um, the union and the swimming pool, so places to eat and drink, relax, um, are within about a, a couple of minutes walk. Um, there's the Dalhousie building here, which is our new newly invested building for where we have a lot of the teaching rooms. Accommodation is all either is a lot on campus or just off campus down here over the other side of this road. Um, and the sports centre is over here, um, so, so you, you can walk across campus in no more than about 10 minutes, I would say. Um, it's also very convenient uh, for the city itself. You only have to walk about five, 10 minutes in this direction. Um, and you will get to uh, the town city centre, probably 10 to 15 minutes walk to get to the railway station. If you do that, you can get to Edinburgh or Glasgow within an hour, within an hour and a half um, or up to Aberdeen in just over an hour. So Dundee is quite conveniently located at kind of at the hub um, of a series of spokes out to the other big Scottish cities. So for, for visiting other places in Scotland, it is very, very convenient. Should, it's also worth saying that because it's a compact city, we're surrounded by beautiful countryside um, and so it's very easy if you're interested in outdoor pursuits it's very easy um, to get access to those um, to go hill walking or mountain biking or um, you see the Tay estuary here you go sailing um, various types of things so moving into civil engineering give you a feel for what we have uh, these are some new labs we've built the discovery labs uh, for supporting our early years um, uh, education, a nice bit of Scottish civil engineering here, the Falkirk wheel. Um, these are general purpose labs that, that we use. They're, they're movable so you can reconfigure the room. Uh, they've got computers here um, uh, so we can use these flexibly to set up design projects across any of our engineering disciplines. Um, there's not this one here and there's another one um, throughout the back here. Um, some of our civil engineering specific labs here, we're doing a structural engineering lab on a, on a roof truss here um, with some of the students in level two structures. So they are looking at what they, the calculations they made and um, what they covered in the, in the lecture materials and looking at this, uh, how this applies um, in a real physical model. Um, the environmental fluid mechanics laboratory here is our um, 15 meter long wave flume. Um, so this can generate wave loading that comes down here and we can put model structures in here um, to, uh, to perhaps as representative of offshore wind turbines or wave energy converters um, and we can see measure the forces on them so we can learn how to design them better. The student here is getting set up to look at a monopole um, design for a wind turbine here. Geotechnical engineering teaching laboratories. Um, we, as I said before, we have lots of very good facil experimental facilities at Dundee and we generally have smaller class sizes because Dundee is a, a smaller university than, than some others. So you get lots of one to one with the, with the staff and lots of hands on with all the equipment. So we hope that all students will have, for example, in geotechnical engineering, all students will have done all the conventional types of tests used in geotechnical engineering before they have left actually hands on, which, which not, not every university can say. 
Um, the Smart Materials Laboratory, so in your individual research project, you may get to use some of the more sophisticated uh, research tools. Uh, so here, this is um, for developing new materials, either perhaps low carbon concretes or, or more sophisticated advanced materials, um, reinforced plastics and anything like uh, recycled plastics, things like that. Uh, this is our geotechnical centrifuge facility. This is a particularly noteworthy facility because it's the only such facility in Scotland on one of only six in the whole UK um, for doing geotechnical modelling. And this is a very nice tool to have because we can develop models of structures or other bits of civil engineering structures, uh, infrastructure um, with the ground and we can simulate the effects of you know, environmental loadings, earthquakes, uh, building loads, construction uh, processes um, uh, using the centrifuge here to make our model behave like a full scale model. Effectively, the centrifuge is like a wind tunnel for the ground. Uh, it's a way of making small scale models behave like they are full scale. Um, so again, adva more advanced facilities that you may be able to use later on in the project in your in your course. We also have um, in recent investment in teaching spaces. So here are some of our new collaborative design uh, spaces. This is the um, the interactive learning studio where students can work together in groups and collaborate um, across their computer uh, uh, computer terminals here in groups. And we have a similar layout to this in our engineering design studio um, in the Fulton building for, for the use of engineering students. We also have higher powered computers for demanding coding applications or um, modeling applications, uh, again, dedicated to the engineering students. Um, in this case being used to do the detailed uh, hydrodynamic analysis of a of a pontoon for a set of three wind turbines. And also nice relaxation facilities. Th these were completed um, within the last uh, couple of years and we haven't got a lot of use out of them because of the pandemic and the shutdown of the buildings. Um, so actually these are nice and still relatively pristi pristine um, and offer some flexible space where where you can come between lectures to either do some work down here um, or, or have a little group meeting if uh, on some project work you're doing or perhaps even just relax and have a coffee. Um, so that's the end of, of what I had to show today. Um, so I move on to this any questions slide and I think at this, at this point um, I just point out um, that if you have any particular questions um, around uh, your offer or anything like that, um, specific to you, you probably want to contact our admissions tutor, Professor Michael Brown, who I'm going to pass to in a minute to chair the Q&A. His email address is here and I'm sure he'll post it in the chat as well for you to access afterwards. Um, so we'll move over now to the Q&A part of the, of, the of the session and I'll pass over to Mike. Thanks, John. Um, can't see any specific questions that we won't cover uh, coming through the chat or the posts, so we'll move directly on probably to asking questions of some of our current students. But just to remind you, if you've got um, any questions as we're talking, I'll be monitoring that as well, and I can ask the um, students on your behalf. So we've got uh, Tom, who looks like he's off having his tea because he's not reappeared, but we've got Claire on the call. He's back. Um, we've got Claire on the call um, at the moment, so I will start by dropping straight into Claire and putting uh, Claire on the spot. Um, similar to what we were maybe asking you before, Claire, why did you particularly uh, choose to come to Dundee and what appealed to you at the time you were choosing universities? Uh, yeah, so I transferred into second year from coming from Edinburgh University and the main difference was the size of the campus and the size of the uni because the campus is quite, um, everything's really close, like it's a really close-knit campus. Um, it's really easy to just go from your lectures and then like straight to either like lab even, because um, in Bra, you'd have two different campuses and you'd have to travel 40 minutes between them both. Um, whereas it's like five minute walk or whatever, between classes. Um, and yeah, it also means like once you've finished for the day, you can go, straight to like an extracurricular um like another society or if you've got a part-time job it's easy to juggle that as well um also yeah. like it isn't very big uni uni so you'll have maybe 30 students in your class and your lecturer will know your name you i mean 
most do at least <laughs> and they're really easy to contact and ask questions as well so that's why I chose Wendy. I think I said previously uh, the feedback. Um, I think I was saying previously Claire I remember your uh, original inquiry email to me when you were uh, first inquired about coming to Dundee so uh, known Claire from before she even started here uh, and I think yeah with the, the size of Dundee you've got a nice campus university everything's in one place as Claire said and yeah we're not uh, a massive degree so generally we you know we have an open door policy the students know us um, we know them on first name terms with everybody which is is really nice and makes for a, a nice working environment for us because it's our job and also a nice I think learning environment from the students hopefully so I think they feel that they can approach us and ask us questions about anything which I think is good um, we've also got uh, Tom on the line Tom I'm going to ask you the same question why you chose Dundee particularly uh, similar reasons initially uh, just um, class sizes um, for student to lecture ratio was pretty good um, compared to other universities that I looked at in Glasgow and stuff so um, that was appealing to me um, like I said I was, I was living in Glasgow so I kind of wanted to move somewhere new so Dundee seemed quite appealing um, it had a bad reputation before until I actually went there and realised that Dundee is actually really nice um, um, the West End is the flat like where the campus is and the flat it's a really nice place to be um, lots of changes going on there and um, I guess I just wanted to come and be a part of that. And we've we've also fortunate enough to get Diva on the on the line, who's actually running and pressing the buttons and doing the sliders in the background, so we all uh, appear when we're supposed to appear. Um, so I'll put you on the spot as well, Diva. Although you're working, um, you're one of our current students as well. So you're an overseas student originally, um, and now part of Dundee. Um, out of all. The universities in the world. Why Dundee? He's muted again. He's the man calling the shots and he's muted again. How embarrassing. Second time for today. Well apologies for that firstly. Um, uh, why Dundee is because uh, firstly I, I, I applied through clearing because uh, I missed my grades to get into other unis and uh, uh, in terms of, 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 uh, of civil engineering in Dundee I think uh, obviously, before coming, I, I had no idea uh, what was the quality. But uh, after four or five years, I can say that I've, I've no regrets coming to Dundee. It's been it's been exceptional in terms of the teaching quality, uh, lab facilities, and and um, other other uh, student opportunities as well, which is great because Dundee is a student city itself, uh, and uh, it's a very small, vibrant, which is uh, fully uh, full by friendly people like that the Dundonians themselves as well as. The international community, uh, which is uh, you know, uh, which uh, they fairly they welcome people from abroad, which is uh, very nice uh, from social aspects of things. But uh, in terms of, of ranking as well, Dundee has got a, a top reputation in the UK, it's top ten in the UK when I applied, uh, and uh, they offered. Um, I think Jonathan mentioned about student funding, and I myself I've benefited out of it. I've got a, a global excellence scholarship, uh, which sort of uh, I get a scholarship off every year. It's not just a one-off scholarship thing, so which is uh, it's a huge uh, financial pressure off of not my shoulders, but my parents' shoulders. So <laughs> that's that's definitely a good thing as well. Uh, Dundee uh, offers loads of scholarships to people uh, that come from all over the world, and uh, in terms of uh, the quality of, as I said before, it's it's just uh, it's been brilliant for four years. And I've spoke to people because we come from this college in Malaysia where we got a uh, we get both different people go to different parts of the UK to study. And from my conversations with my friends and all of them, I think what uh, that's been delivered in Dundee is definitely the, the best so far that I've heard. Because in terms of labs and, and group work and all, we work in smaller groups, which means you've got more personal contact, like Jonathan mentioned, you get the one to one uh, conversations with lecturers and they personally know you. Most of the lecturers personally know you and they know um, if you've got a question, you can go right away to them. There's, there's not much formality you know, behind things. You could just drop a Teams message or you could just uh, talk to someone uh, after class and, and they're more than happy to help you. Even it's after office hours, I've had uh, people, uh, I had lecturers supporting me even after office hours. So in terms of that, I think Dundee just uh, takes all the boxes uh, for you to learn. Uh, and um, also the career services offered a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for students to when you, when, you, when you apply for internships and placements or even jobs you go for. They prepare you for mock interviews. CV checks and all that as well. So that all that's that's all ticked as well. And uh, 
I believe Maureen Newland runs the carrier sessions where they get industry speakers to come, uh, people from the industry to come and talk and to uh, to talk to us about placements and internships. So that's that's all the extra part, which is also being ticked in here at Dundee. So we've got all the extra bits also covered apart from uh, the academic side of things. So but more more than more, I think I've, I've spoken more than what's been asked. So I'll, I'll pass it back to Mike now. Thank you, David. I think, well, that's a good uh, segue into asking people about what they were doing over the summer. Um, you mentioned industry links and obviously civil engineering is a vocational course. We, we're training you to be civil engineers, hopefully. Um, Claire, can you say a little bit about what you've been doing in terms of internships and how you think the degree got you ready for that? Uh, yeah, so I've been um, doing an internship with uh, Dundee City Council at the moment. Uh, it was actually uh, posted, like the, the link for it was posted by Murray. So one of the lecturers posted it into this like careers kind of chat we have. And so it was actually through Dundee Uni I heard about it. Um, I've done various things. Um, some of it was just like basic looking at walls. Cracked badly enough that they'd fall or anything or stuff like that. But um, I've also been designing foundations and anchorage systems. Um, so that's, I've already like some of the software I've been using, I've, I've already used in my degree. So uh, that was helpful. Um, but yeah. Good. So it sounds like a bit of maybe geotechnical engineering, structural engineering. How about um, you, Tom? What have you been doing over this summer? Uh, so I worked for a firm called Goodson's structural and civil engineering, uh, mainly just in their structures department. Um, so they're kind of like residential blocks, schools, um, things like that, converting old buildings into new things. Um, so I've been working on that over the summer, um, working a lot with the software that we, like Claire says, we started to use a Tecla structure, structure designer uh, last year. So I've been using that over the summer, it's been quite good because we use that next year in our project. Um, just designing beams and foundations and uh, different structures. Um, also looking at like site appraisals and um, so looking at potential new sites and analysing like what's actually happening at that site or what's happened there in history. So you can decide whether it's a good or a safe place to build whatever structure has been proposed there. Um, so it's been a good experience. Um, I was saying in the last presentation, like I've learned like so much in uni and it's prepared me for that, like got me to the point where I can communicate with all the engineers in the office and have intelligent conversations about things. Um, but then at the same time that you're kind of like, you realize there's so much more to learn. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's been, it's been a really good experience. I've, I've learned so much over the summer. Um, and yeah, I kind of got that through showing presentation of the reports and stuff that that I produced whilst at university. So through the modules and stuff, creating reports for various tasks that were given through the year. Yeah, when I when I went to my interview, I took them with me to show like the kind of things that we'd done in class and stuff, and they were impressed by that. So it's clearly a good link between what we're getting taught and what, what we'd actually do in the real in the real world. Thank you, Tom. Um, I think we've got a few minutes left, not many more. Um, one of the things that sort of highlighted, there's a lot of mention there of structures and structural engineering and, and often people think that structures and structural engineering is a separate degree um, and you need to study something different to do that. Actually, structural engineering is a core part of civil engineering. As Jonathan mentioned, we've got a new degree that also focuses on architecture and structural engineering as well. Um, so don't be confused. If, if you want to study structures, you do it as part of your degree um, and we all do that as civil engineers. So there's no separate degree in structural engineering. Um, one of the things that Jonathan pulled out was that we do a lot of industry based um, research. And one of the things that we like to do is try and translate that into our teaching as well. And we do that with the students mainly as part of um, our honours year project or final year project, as Jonathan mentioned. Um, Claire, I don't know if you want to say a little bit about the honours project that you were working on at all. Uh, yeah, so I did my honours project on pipeline uplift. Um, so like gas, oil pipes that run 
for like miles and miles, uh, usually under the sea and placing like a rock berm on top of there to stop it from uplifting. Um, it's very like relevant, I'd say, to industry because um, these like industries will want to make sure they use the rock burn effectively so they don't want to make a rock burn too big because obviously if it's running for miles and miles it's really expensive um so mine just looked at like very much optimizing and using like the best rock burn possible to prevent the pipeline uplift so, yeah. so being <laughs> also a relevant project to um, location near to Aberdeen and oil and gas centers in the UK but also moving forward the kind of technology that you were studying is is equally applicable to renewable energy through subsea cables and this kind of thing so uh, very relevant problems tom do you want to just say quickly what you were working on uh, yes yeah, so i was looking at uplift as well but of um pylon foundations so it was looking at replacing um the cabling on the pylons so there would be increased load on them um, and therefore increased load on the foundations that support them during uplift and you know, when they fall over or if they hopefully don't fall over. And um, so I done research for that with Mike was my supervisor for that project um, and we looked at best ways of analysing them um, and basically seeing if the existing foundations could be upgraded in any way so that we didn't have to replace the full structure. We could uh, maybe do some remedial work or just leave them be. Maybe they're already strong enough to support these new loads. Um, so there was obviously a sort of carbon saving aspect to that, a sort of greener approach to rather than just digging them out and putting new ones in. Um, that was connected with SSE. Um, so I kind of got to do work on a, a real project, um, like, you know, a real thing that's actually happening, which was quite cool. Um, and then got to present my research at the end to SSE. So um, it was nice to feel engaged with a real world project in that sense. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tom. I think that's um, all we've run out of time. We could talk forever. Civil engineers, terrible. We'll keep going if you let us um, about our interesting projects. Um, just like to say thank you to Tom, Claire, and Diva on the call for their helping us with our Q and A and giving you some feel for the degree there. Um, I don't think we've got any more questions coming through, and I think we've run out of time. Jonathan, I don't know if there's anything you want to say to close up at all. Um, yeah, so I think there's still a, a, a string of posts back in the Q&A that, that Mike's posted uh, throughout the two sessions uh, today. Um, so you can go and have a look at there for various links, which might be of use. And obviously when you leave the um, session today, you go back to the uh, the lobby um, of, of, the, of the, the, the virtual open day. Um, and if you go to the exhibition hall, um, you should be able to to find various booths that will have information on funding, um, and some of the other general things we've talked about. But I do recommend you also go to the School of Science and Engineering booth as well, um, where we have um, we should have some uploaded some additional content, some additional video um, interviews with some of our other students um, um, and some other content like links to blog blog posts and, and other online online content. So I, I think you should be able to access all that for the next 30 days or so um, and all being well. We, we may hope to actually see you and be able to take you around the campus at some point in 2022. And if not, we would hope to be able to see you um, in September 2022 as an, a new incoming undergraduate student. So thank you for your attention and uh, we'll sign off now. <laughs>